The other thing that I was going to say when, when kind of helping to identify whether this is bacterial or fungal, um, it, not a hard and fast rule, but sometimes a really, really painful ear typically is more uh, bacterial. Uh, an ear that's just itchy and clogged, more likely to be fungal. Hey guys. It's uh, Dr. Ndavia. With me, I have Dr. Reddy and Dr. Smith. We're from NJ ENT and Facial Plastic Surgery. And today we wanted to add to our podcast series by talking about itchy ears. Um, we have tons of patients that talk about itchy ears and complain about itchy ears and they haven't found any solution. So we wanted to talk to you about what could potentially cause itchy ears and what we do about them. Um, so I'm gonna lead by starting to ask Dr. Reddy about some of the things that he's seen in the office that have caused itchy ears. Well, first, uh, first, Dr. Smith, can you show us what patients do when they tell you that they have itchy ears? <laughs> Seriously? So most patients come in and they say, my ears are yeah, really, they have to. my ears are really itching. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they, have they you say, guys ever had they itchy ears? They keep ears? trying to keep their, stick their finger in their ear because it itches. And so often. Yeah. I've had itchy ears. It is very, very deep. You can't get to it. You can never get to it. Um. Okay, thank you for that demonstration. Now, Dr. Reddy. Yeah. People stick all sorts of things in their ears. <laughs> so, so multiple different causes of itchy ears. The first step is to do a proper uh, physical examination of the ears where we put an otoscope into the ears and take a look around. Um, but some common causes include first various infections. So different infections like Viral infections, bacterial infections, or fungal infections can all cause itchy ears. So those uh, those include things like swimmer's ears or otitis externa. Uh, otomycosis is a medical term for a fungal infection of the ear. And a lot of those uh, infections can cause itchy ears. And if you treat the infection, then you generally can make the itchiness get better. Another cause is earwax. So excessive earwax buildup can for some people cause itchiness, and if you clean up the earwax, then that can help improve things. Um, and then eczema, dryness, um, psoriasis in the ear canal can do it, allergies. Those are some of the main kinds of uh, causes of itchy ears. You were telling us last night about a patient that you found with a hair in there. Want to talk about that? Yeah, so, yeah. so foreign bodies, including hair, if it's kind of in the right particular spot can cause itchiness or other symptoms like coughing. And if you clean that all up, then generally speaking, your itchiness gets better. Yep, yep, yep. Um, all right, Dr. Smith, um, let's go after the infectious stuff first uh, as related to an itchy ear. Do you wanna talk about what you would normally do for that? Sure, so the first thing is to try to figure out what the causative agent is for the infection, whether it's fungal or bacterial. Um, you know, fungal infections and bacterial infections typically have different uh, treatments. Uh, if they're really resistant infections, sometimes we'll even culture the ear to try to determine, you know, what the makeup of the bacterial or fungal infection is. Most commonly, kind of the, the routine prescribed medications typically work for fungal infections and bacterial infections, but every once in a while, a special medication may need to be compounded based off of what a culture may show. Um, so some things that can give us, us physicians some clues about whether it's bacteria or fungal. You know, sometimes we can even see like little mold spores or fungal spores inside the ear canal. So if we see like these little white furry uh, or gray furry extensions coming out of the ear skin, um, or if there's cheesy kind of like fungal debris within the ear canal, uh, sometimes we'll get some ideas if it's fungal versus bacterial. And often it's a problem with uh, the, a lack of improper acidification within the ear. The ears themselves make uh, cerumen or wax, and that cerumen helps keep the ear canal healthy. It, the cerumen is kind of oily and also acidic, and so it helps keep that warm, dark ear canal, uh, which is a setup for fungal and bacterial infections, healthy so that we don't end up with these infections. Um, you know, some people often use Q-tips or other things to itch their ears, and that makes them more likely and more prone to get infections. Water exposure being trapped behind wax uh, can make somebody more prone to get infections. 
So was trying to figure out, one, what the cause of it may have been, whether it was just a dry, itchy ear that someone kept using Q-tips and caused a, a break in the skin, allowing a, an infection to get through, or whether it's chronic water exposure, trapped behind wax from swimming, or, you know, uh, someone who does, you know, uh, water aerobics or and, and some daily water exposure can get these infections. So always we take a thorough history just to see if there's a causative uh, something that we can do to prohibit these from recurring. Um, and then treatment, usually it's a, a topical treatment for the outer ear canal, whether it's an ointment or a drop or a cream, depends on kind of what the, what the causative agent is. Fungal infections, sometimes just reacidifying the ear can help. So, um, you know, over-the-counter homeopathic treatments like uh, alcohol vinegar type solutions, um, and those are kind of like what the swimmer's ear over-the-counter type uh, treatments are. They're usually an acidifying agent and a drying agent to try to help dry the ear out. But often those may not be enough, and so we can use um, antibiotic drops uh, that we have uh, prescribing abilities for, as well as um, antifungal drops and medications um, that we can prescribe. Uh, and some are over-the-counter, but most of these are prescription-based. Um, the other thing that I was going to say when, when kind of helping to identify whether this is bacterial or fungal, um, it, not a hard and fast rule, but sometimes a really, really painful ear typically is more uh, bacterial. Uh, an ear that's just itchy and clogged, more likely to be fungal. The other things are if the patient took an antibiotic for like a foot infection or a pneumonia or something, they are more likely to have a fungal infection afterwards because you killed off all the good bacteria. The ear canal is actually a very sensitive balance of viruses, bacteria, and fungus. And when you kill off one, you raise the possibility of the others kind of taking over and overflowing. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the allergy component of itchy ears. Um, uh, so if, if the patient really does have only itchy ears and doesn't have itchy eyes or sneezing or coughing, we want to rehydrate the ear um, so we can use oils, just baby oil or mineral oil. Using a thicker oil um, can sometimes be helpful, but also can be a little bit clogging. So baby oils, mineral oils, if that's not enough, we can use a prescription called Dermotic. Uh, and that is an oil that has a steroid inside of it. You do five drops twice a day of that. It can be very, very helpful. Um, this is not going to cure the problem. This is going to treat the symptoms. So if you stop using the drop and you still have whatever the allergy is that's inciting this around you, you're going to have the itchiness. So you'll just need to use a drop when you have the allergies around it. If you have other symptoms like cough or runny nose or itchy eyes, sometimes using like a systemic like Zyrtec or Claritin or Zyzal or Allegra, those can all be very helpful. Sometimes we need to put patients on nasal sprays too, just to get it into the station tube so that the ear stops itching as well. Um, Along the lines uh, of the eczema and skin conditions that are related to allergy, sometimes the biggest uh, enemy of the patient or uh, is, is them themselves with the chronic itching. So uh, if they have dry ears and they don't have a lot of wax and they continue to use Q-tips or pen caps or bobby pins or something to scratch the inside of the ear, that itself, that chronic inflammation from scratching will make the eczema worse, which then makes the itching worse. So it's like kind of a, a cyclical thing that needs to get broken. And often just instructing a patient to avoid any instruments and keeping the ears dry can sometimes be enough just to stop the ear itching. I think, I think we covered most of the topics pretty well. Um, the visit is usually an easy visit for patients. So it's, it's often you just come in, we take a look in the ear, and we have a quick, simple fix for you. Um, do you guys have anything else to add to that? No. No, I think that was great. Um, cool. So uh, once again, we're NJ ENT and Facial Plastic Surgery. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can always email us at info at NJENT or call or text us at 609-710-6673. Uh, stay tuned and follow up for more podcasts coming soon. Take care.